All right, hit it, T-Model Ford. Hey guys, welcome to a cold, windy, rainy day in California. All right, that's how I feel today. I wore my body for so long, it makes my shoulders sore. Okay, so I got some good news and I got some bad news. So let's do the good news first. The good news is I need to tell you about the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic. Um, it's put together nearly every year in North Mississippi, about the third week in June by Kenny Brown and his wife, Sarah. If you get the opportunity to go there, do that. If you can't get there, you need to look and see if you can't find one of the recordings of the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic. They usually come out the different artists that play there sometimes release things. One of the best ones I've ever hit, heard is Live in the Hills, North Mississippi All-Stars, Live in the Hills, Volume 1. Volume 2 is good too, but Volume 1 is really good. It was recorded at the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic. So plan next year. If you like our kind of music, you're going to love this place. Now for the bad news. Well, it's raining again. Now the bad news is my bad news probably your good news you remember i was building another wyoming cowboy themed license plate guitar well everything was going really good until i strung it up so i put all four strings on it started tightening up everything a little bit on this one this one this one and i noticed and when I put the tuner on, I wasn't getting anywhere. I would get closer to the note, closer to the note, and then boom, it would change. When that's happening, something's going wrong. Either you don't have the string seated right, or something's starting to pop loose. Well, guess what? The tailpiece was popping loose. It was bending up like this. So, in this episode, I'm going to go to the bench. I am going to show you where... Uh, things cut loose sometimes if you're tightening it up and you see your, your action going up and you're not getting anywhere on the tuning something's wrong and I'll show you the places that usually happens and why and then I'm going to show you a quick fix on this one I, I I'm gonna have to either build a new neck or change the tailpiece on this because this isn't gonna work housekeeping of course always at the end of the video there's my uh, my email address i like your comments or your suggestions if you got something you want to share especially about this episode where we can all learn from my mistakes share that with me uh there's a subscribe button in the middle and my playlist so let's hit the workbench and see what we can do with this thing okay guys i think i got my lighting set up and my bench set up because i got a number of things to show you here where we're going to start is where things typically cut loose on one of these uh, guitars and that's typically at the scarf joint where the uh, thickening board for lack of a better word where our second piece of wood goes on our neck board and then in the case of this one at the tail piece okay let's get this one out of the way and I want to talk to you first about the scarf joint. A couple things about the scarf joint and the headstock. I've never been a proponent of using uh, just neck boards, the width of neck boards, uh, two buys up into here and then putting wings on them. I imagine if I were to do that, I'd want to put dowels through this way because, face it, I'm an arborist. I've actually written papers about how trees behave in windstorms. If you're really bored and you don't get out enough and you want to read one of them, let me know, send me an email, I'll send you one. But wherever there's grain and a split and it's not something that the tree built itself, i.e. a limb attached to the branch uh, or, or a limb attached to the trunk that benefits from wood being added on it every year anytime you pair up two odd surfaces you're just depending on the glue so you'll remember here that i put these dowels through 
it strengthens up my joint here because what's happening is when you put the strings on this angle here the more steep it is the stronger the stress is right here and it's going to want to cut loose so sometimes if you start feeling something popping loose you want to check this right here anyway once again i did an episode on slipping scarf joints and i'm a big proponent on using dowels and if i were going to use this board and put wings on for the headstock I would be doweling it this way if I have different pieces of wood here because the tuners will pop up too. So uh, that said, um, I think I should just do an episode on just headstocks, how to cut them, how to size them, how to shape them and all that. Look for that in the future. Now the next place that these things can cut loose is right here. If there's enough tension on this, see this is set below uh, the box is set below. That means that this is cut out. The neck gets thinner through the box, and I'll show you that. It can get even thinner if you're putting pickups on, coils, that type of thing where you, you're cutting down into the wood. So you reinforce with this. If this starts to bow and this isn't solid, boom, this starts to crack loose. You get a gap in there. That causes the, the neck to pivot up this way, and your action starts rising up here. I'm going to show you another guitar that historically this type of guitar has had this exact problem. Do you remember this guitar? I'm going to put a link uh, up. Uh, this There's actually a video of Bob Log the Third playing this exact guitar. Uh, it's an old airline which was made by the K Company um, and it was sold in Montgomery Wards about 19... Uh, 54 1955 you could buy this guitar for about $16 the case was another two or three and uh, I've got that up there somewhere there it is but anyway you could buy this guitar it was a good Christmas present there's still a lot of them floating around but they typically have a problem let's turn this thing around and take a look and that problem is typically right here where the neck meets the body and what happens is because this is glued into a slot it doesn't go all the way through the body this will start to cut loose right here and the effect of this cutting loose right here is the neck pivots let me get the camera back pivots that way and your action goes up so you'll see a lot of these on ebay selling for a couple hundred bucks and you always want to ask if there's at the 12th fret action that you can slip a couple quarters in between because if that's happening this neck is breaking loose right there this thing is pivoting forward and your action gets high you can put a couple hundred bucks in getting this cut loose and uh, there's a way to do this with a, a single cup cappuccino machine and popping frets off here and drilling holes and steaming this off but it's pretty easy to get four or five hundred bucks into a guitar that's probably worth two. So what I just described on that airline cutting loose can happen right here if these two pieces separate. Now I know we're going to be talking about the tail piece and that's next but anytime you've got something going through that you might think is a little thin this might also be a place where you would put dowels here and then through the body in a couple spots better safe than sorry because the bottom line whether it's the scarf joint or the neck here anytime you've got pull going this way if you've got dowels going through those dowels going perpendicular to the force actually stop this from moving initially and you know that once something starts moving or cutting loose inertia says it's going to keep doing it so think those dowels out and see if they work for you now i did an episode called grounding the strings and it talks about uh, this configuration of using a board through the body um, for neck the neck extends through the body and then i drill holes i use tension pins with the slot facing backwards copper tape 
and then canning lids that have the coating ground off of them so my strings touch the tension pins which touch the copper tape which ground the strings and um, it's worked really well for me but the problem with this one is it started to cut loose and move I can't trust it to stay in place and maybe it'll break right here so I'm going to open this up and kind of show you what went wrong and then we'll think about how to fix it all right first four screws take the plate off and you can see here that the framework of the top of the box has a couple of insets here that I had to take the thickness of the neck board down to sit those down. Let me take those off and let you have a look at that. Okay, so the top of the box is held in place to the sides with these four exterior finish screws and then here onto the neck with two finish screws. Remember, I did an episode on this kit and how it works and how it goes together, but that pops right off. Now, there's my wiring isn't that ugly, but you can see what's going on here is I had to take a little bit out of the neck board here for this coil episode called Cheap Coil or Cheap Pickup. You can check that out there, but this is virtually about one board thick here because I had to get the height right on the neck and fingerboard and over here the same thing this drops down into here and so to make everything my action be okay and to use this floating bridge I'm a little shy on wood here so what ended up happening at the end is since my tension pins are this long I cut this here and my fatal air right there was you see how thin that is that's where it's given the next one I build, I have a choice to make. I could either take wood off from the top here and put a metal edge right here and leave this thicker down here, which would be more desirable. That would have been the better solution. Or I can decide I'm going to end the neck piece right here. And in fact, this kit is built to pocket this right here. Let me show you one. So here's one of these kits that hasn't uh, had anything done with it yet. And you can see that instead of the neck going through right there, that one has been cut. This one has not been cut. And the neck pockets right there, the end of the neck pockets right there. So I could have cut this off here. Uh, done everything the same and then once this is all glued up and finalized I would simply run screws through this area here and the neck wouldn't be sticking out of course I have to ground my strings and come up with another way to do that so back to this one I do have the full thickness here um, when this is screwed down it actually helps hold this together and it gives this thickness right here to work with so if I cut this off right here I still have my tape I still have a way to ground my strings and I can salvage this without making a new neck but I need something and I think I found it this right here sits on the back of your neck board like so and in this case it would be like this the only thing stopping me from using this is making a cut right here flush with the back of the box so I'm going to use this four string store bought tail piece as a solution for this so I'm going to first cut this off flush this up where the back of the box and the uh, neck are are nice and flat and smooth I'm gonna do some grinding here to make sure I got good ground against my copper tape and then I'm gonna put this on and I think it'll be my solution so let me do that and get back with you 
Now I don't want to undo all my wiring here and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my flush cut saw and I'm going to run it right there like so. It should just take us a minute to get through this. There, there we go. I'm going to hang this in clear sight where I can always remember my mistake here. But what happened here is this is not flush. So I'm going to make sure that this is flush. And I have to be careful because I really don't want to move this much because I've already got my scale laid out where my bridge needs to be and moving the neck this way or that way is going to change that because the neck is separate from the top of the box. All right, I move my camera and you can see that I've got this flush with this. It's not too pretty, but again, I don't want to take much of this off any more than I have to because everything is lined up here already. So what I need to do now is I need to make sure, oh, I've never told you, you need to buy this copper tape in rolls. Um, the way you look for it is, well, I'm cutting here, is you don't look at for it under luthier supplies. Again, I'm a tree guy, and I'll tell you, some people use copper tape to keep snails away because they won't cross it. So they sell it in rolls like this relatively cheap. Of course, it's all based on the price of copper but it's a lot more economical to buy it as an insect repellent than it is a luthier supply so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off how wide that is by doing this here making a mark here and cutting it with the scissors and then peeling it off and putting it on here both top and bottom so I keep my continuity and my ground in here all right there we go again I'm gonna put it on the top and bottom where my screws are gonna go I don't want to waste any of it going backwards if I was going to use this where I was going to use the pocket instead of doing what I've done I was simply do it exactly the same way um, that way when my screws came through here, I would make sure that I had a screws that were conductive grind this off a little bit and just simply screw it through the end of the box like that um, and I would still be able to ground my strings using this thing so I'm putting the top of the box back on including where it sits into the mat Notice I got my clutch set down. I don't want to strip anything out. This one's been kind of bad luck for me. But once I have that like that, then I can figure out where my holes are going to be. And I can drill pilot holes with a small bit. You want to remember that I've ground this down to bare metal. So whatever I'm running through here, this will connect with the copper and I'll be good to go. Okay, I've got the first pilot hole drilled there. I'm going to use the same finished exterior screw that I used for the top of the box and where it attaches uh, to the neck, but the stock holes aren't big enough to accept that. So remember, you've got these holes here and these pegs. Don't forget about those in the tops of these workbenches. They come in really handy, but I can just put this, use my a drill bit that I'm going to use for my pilot hole to accept the screw in the back of the tail piece and put this over here and so you want to be careful with this because this will spin around on you and cut you but get the drill going the right way there we go hey there's a blessing in disguise here the way I've done this had this been seated inside the box and I run the screw in, this then is attached to the box. So you would have to pull this off, meaning you would have to pull your strings off. And one of the trademarks of my guitars is you can pull the top of the box off and get to the guts of it without unstringing the string. So this way, I just simply pull this off 
pull the screws off and voila, I can still pull everything off and not have to take the strings off. Happy about that. So I'm going to put this all back together, get uh, everything finalized and get some strings on it. We'll see how this all worked out. There it is. Um, worked out great. Uh, put this tail piece I got in uh, through the mail order and um, it worked out well for me. A um, couple of things I forgot in the video. You know, I kind of took this for granted, but there's something I got to tell you about strings. I did an episode about strings, about the tunings I use, and there'll be an I card popping up to that, but I'm using 60 and 56 and 46 strings, um, and those are heavy strings. I mean, I could probably take uh, these and string a few of them together and put a vehicle in neutral and pull that vehicle with another uh, vehicle with this. So, I mean, these are heavy strings. That's part of my problem. So that's why my necks have to be beefy. All right, so heavy strings, heavier neck. Um, before I forget, I want to remind you one more time, uh, live in the hills from the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic. Um, this is probably one of the best CDs I've heard from the North Mississippi All-Stars. They did another one the year after. See if you can get a hold of these. All right, that's it. I'll see you next episode. Don't forget the buttons that are popping up right about now. Use those. And I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.